right, this is part three of section two, and this is going to cover thermochemical stoichiometry. So here you have a thermochemical equation. You have the burning of methane gas to produce carbon dioxide and water. When you burn one mole of methane gas, you will produce 890 kilojoules of energy, a.k.a. heat. Now, when you produce one mole of carbon dioxide from this burning, you will release 890 kilojoules of energy. When you produce two moles of water from this burning of one mole of methane gas, you will produce 890 kilojoules of energy. There are, if you recall, two ways to write thermochemical equations. The first way is staring you in the face with the delta H, which of course is the enthalpy, which is of course at constant pressure. And the second way to write it is with the energy indicated in the body of the equation. And since energy is being released, you'd place it on the product side. So the more popular way, of course, is this first way. But there is a second way to write thermochemical equations. We're just very familiar with the first one. All right, thermochemical stoichiometry is really relatively easy. So here's the first question. It says, how much heat is produced if 2.56 grams of methane is burned in excess oxygen gas? So you're going to start with the 2.56 grams of methane gas. And of course, what do we always do? What's the very first ratio? Anytime we tackle a stoichiometry problem that starts us out in mass, we convert from moles to mass. 16.05 grams of methane is one mole. Now, here's the trick with thermochemical equations. From the balanced chemical equation. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to leave soon. All right. Okay. I'll see you. you two have fun at Manuka. Mm -hmm. From the balanced chemical equation, it states that one mole of methane produces 890 kilojoules. And I don't have one mole. Obviously, I have a lot less than one mole. So the question's saying, well, how much energy will a lot less than one mole produce? So from my balanced equation, 890 kilojoules for every one mole of methane gas, plug it into my calculator, and I will find that 142 kilojoules of energy is produced. Now notice I didn't include the negative sign. You can if you like, but please, 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 please remember that the negative sign merely tells you direction. I already know the energy is being produced. Just because I'm burning more or less methane doesn't mean it's going to not be produced and it's going to be absorbed. So the fact that the sign of the energy has already been established in the original stoichiometric reaction, you don't necessarily have to include the sign in your answer. I mean, the question asks you how much is being produced. So it's kind of like intuitive knowing it's an exothermic reaction, knowing that you're going to produce less energy with less moles of. All right, we are going to use the same thermochemical equation written in the same format. Now it asks how much heat is produced if 2.56 grams of methane is burned in 12.4 grams of oxygen. Notice in the problem, they give you the mass of both reactants. What kind of problem is this? Yep, limiting excess problem. All right. 2.56 grams of methane burned with 12.24 grams of oxygen gas converted from mass to moles of with molar mass
Now, again, from the thermochemical stoichiometry, both of them are producing, because it's an exothermic reaction, from the thermochemical equation, You just read the coefficient for the oxygen gas. This is going to be my least amount of energy because this is going to be my limiting reactant and this is going to be my excess reactant. Next type of problem, propane. How much energy is released if I burn 5.66 grams of propane in excess oxygen? All right, so this is not a limiting excess problem. It's good. Notice that one mole of propane releases a lot more energy than one mole of methane. And of course you've got carbon-carbon bonds in propane, so I would expect it to be more energy to break those bonds. Don't forget methane was just one carbon attached to four hydrogens. This is three carbons and eight hydrogens. So the fact that there's more energy isn't terribly surprising to me. All right, so we are going to tackle this one. They want to know how much energy is released. And again, it's already established as being released. Just because I'm burning 5.66 grams, which I am going to assume is not a full mole of propane, just because I'm burning that much doesn't mean it's going to be endothermic. It's still going to release energy. So they're kind of asking you, all right, do I stand back? Or can I stand a little closer to this burning? So we're going to do the work. From mass to moles of propane, molar mass of propane, three carbons, eight hydrogens. According to the thermochemical reaction, for every one mole of propane burnt, 2,043 kilojoules of energy gets released. That means for 5.66 grams, which is way less than one mole, I am only going to release 262 kilojoules. Released or produced negative sign or not, as long as you remember the negative sign just tells you that it is being released. These, please remember, are at constant pressure. These are the typical burnings at one atmosphere. And energy is being in the form of heat. Energy in the form of heat is being transferred. So where is it all going? Well, it depends on what you're doing with the propane. Maybe you're cooking meat, and this quantity of propane is releasing 262 kilojoules into your meat. Must these reactions have been carried out at constant volume or constant pressure? These reactions are being at constant pressure because at constant pressure, enthalpy change is heat at constant pressure. The energy is being transferred. You are burning a certain amount of propane so that that energy that is being released from the propane is going into your hamburger, your hot dog, your meat, whatever. 
that exact amount being released by the propane is going into your food.